It's like we're at time. So welcome everybody. If you're just getting here, we're just getting, uh, we're getting all set up. We usually start about five minutes after and uh, the focus of today's workshop is, is on your name, on the name of your, of your company, on the name of your product or service. And uh, we're gonna start the workshop off today with a little poll. So if you're just getting here, you should be able to see a poll up on your screen and um, what's in a name? Uh, are you, or do any of these following apply to you that you're thinking of a name, but you haven't done any research on that name, that you have that company and product and service name chosen and um, researched and completed. Uh, if you just have a company name and if you just have a product name, if, if any of those apply to you, please, please go ahead and select those. And um, yeah, and then I'll introduce to you, while that poll is going on, I'll introduce to you our guest speaker today, who most of you already know because you've, you've seen many times in many of the other workshops and, and um, also uh, uh, one of the members of our, of our Rec Innovation Lab, our incubator. He's a, he is a student founder, but he is much more than that. He's also a mentor himself. He's a, he's a, a lawyer. He's a serial entrepreneur, a lot of experience um, in the world of entrepreneurship and, and starting a, a company here um, right now with the Rec Innovation Lab, which we're really excited about. And I'm excited to use in my classes, um, uh, the TCXR. And um, I, I, won't, I won't talk, talk your ear off. I'll let you introduce yourself. Uh, Ray, Ray, we want to go ahead and introduce yourself uh, to the audience. Sure. I'm um, sorry. I have to. Okay. <laughs> I've submitted my poll now as well. Okay. So hi, all. Um, thank you for the, those words, Tanya. Um, or Professor Hertz, I should say, right? You so, can call me Tanya. You can call me Tanya. <laughs> so um, today is is just basically an informal overview of what you should be thinking about, or maybe you have thought about it, and <clears throat> I'll give you a few more considerations you may want to think about, and um, how it all pulls together. Okay, so basically, it's it's I should be done in about thirty minutes, give or take. Um, I'm hoping I get the results of the poll soon. So I that just I put the results out there so you can see that before you get started. Okay. So the results are 47% have a company and a product name chosen. Okay, great. Okay. And so for, for those guys, that's about half the group. That's good. Um, and I'll give you some of the considerations that uh, you may want to start thinking about if you haven't already done these things uh, because the last thing you want to do is get semi-successful and then you get a cease and desist order and that would suck so um yeah that's the lawyer part of me talking to you right now so let's uh move on and and um the first thing is 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 you want to have fun naming your company I, I you know as a lawyer and as having gone through this a number of times for naming a company it can be extraordinarily frustrating um i get that but what I'd say for you guys who've already done it, the 50% or so that have, understand that um, th that's good. Um, but you should have a, just in case, one of the considerations is have other names at the handy, right? Because you may be in a situation where um, things could take a turn. And um, that's why I wanted to talk a little bit about product versus um, uh, company name considerations, which may help get you a little bit out of trouble, okay? Um, I'm not gonna say it always does, but it, it could be something like that. Um, so for those of you guys who are just thinking about uh, starting up and figuring out a name, always be, um, have the fun part of it in mind. I saw a poll, what started all this was uh, the, the last go around there was a poll. Somebody said, hey, you know, somebody give us a name. That's not a bad idea, but make sure you back that up with a list of names, right? That you, as you start thinking about it and um, uh, I'll go on <clears throat> later on, you'll see the four steps, right? What I call the, the, uh, um, the, the part of a stool, right? That holds the stool up, right? If you aren't so sure your name conveys what you want, which is okay, right? So maybe you have some name like our name, the Commons XR gives you no meaning to what it does, but then make sure you have a slogan or a tagline that is associated with that as a, as a marketing brand that will help you, okay? And so that's what I want to say is that uh, I always thought, um, uh, I'll tell you the, you know, in the last decade, the URL was the most important thing. 
um, thanks to some of the uh, new technology trends with searching, you can now put a, uh, any name you want in the address bar. It doesn't have to be a URL. It works. They find it. They search it. So that was a big plus, and you'll see I've changed up my opinion on these things. Now, for slogans, <clears throat> just as a show of hands, um, let me see if I, yeah, I got them now. So for show of hands, if I said something like, melts in your mouth, you know, just show your hands if you, if, if we recognize that you recognize that right okay so to raise your hand there's a little reaction uh, a reaction button at the bottom of your screen um and so you just click on the little reaction oh, and so higher got it that's oh. right there well, i was go. giving a thumbs up i guess we can raise our hand in the participant as well <laughs> that's right your thumbs up all of that works because i get to see it so th this is a little test to make you know to help you guys uh work with with uh, the technology we have as well right mm -hmm and keep you a little involved, make sure you're paying attention to me. So <laughs> a little game, right? Um, but anyhow, so that's really important because that, that was M&Ms, but one has got nothing to do with the other, except they're, you know, they use that as a slogan, a marketing slogan, and it works. Everybody knows that. If I said something like, can you hear me now? I mean, everybody says that, but you know, if I said to you, what brand is associated with that, you would know immediately. I won't even ask you to raise your hand because, I'm not gonna do any more marketing for them. <laughs> okay, so the next thing is the four legs of naming that I was talking about. And um, if you see the website addresses last now, so I would still say that the number one thing that you need to think about is your marketing, how you market it, what you think about uh, putting that together, and then uh, the clearances, right? Because you are going to have to think about this stuff, whether you like it or not, okay? So let's get to the marketing considerations. If I say to you, you know, I meet you in an elevator, I meet you on the street pre-COVID, I don't know what I do today, you know, wear the mask. Maybe I put, maybe I put the brand on my mask, right? But anyhow, I say to you, hi, I'm Ray. I'm the CEO of the Commons XR. And the thing is, is that maybe I had a tagline you know, what we do. But the point is, is that what some of us just need to say who we are. Some of us may add a tagline to give some more substance to it. But the hope is, is that um, in some cases you want a hook to be able to get somebody to ask you the question, well, what is, what is that? What do, you, what do you guys do, right? You're always looking to get somebody to react to it and come back to you if you're, you know, especially in the startup stage. That's a great thing. So you want to brand it. That's all, all you guys know all this stuff, I suspect pretty well already. Um, the other things are, these are kind of philosophical, right? Does it reflect your mission, your values? Um, um, can you construct a logo around it? Do you want to? You should, um, but it can just be black, you know, block letters or it could be a visual de depictation, um, or it could be some consideration of everything that maybe incorporates your, your tagline with the name of your company and the logo, right? It's all good. Um, understand that logos can cost you money. Uh, Rohan, I'm looking forward to seeing <laughs> what we got going. Um, and and uh, these are important things because visually, people react very important to visual things. So. Keep all that in mind when you're looking at the name, right? And uh, the last thing I put in here, because this, this is part of the problems I had at Qualcomm, because uh, we were in 60 countries in the world, be careful of foreign meanings. Now, we may not have as much of a problem with that in our startup stages, but just keep an eye to it, because if you're on the web, you're available to anybody anywhere. So if there's a major market that you do want to have some consideration for, i.e., I don't know, China or maybe um, Mexico or, you know, Spanish speaking or uh, French or German or whatever it is, just give that a thought, okay? And just make sure you're okay with it. Um, the next part of this is, oh, are there any questions? Let me do this. Are there any uh, questions on market considerations? And, and I also want to encourage everyone, if you have any questions as we're moving along, you're also welcome to, to put those questions into the, uh, into the chat at the bottom and, and we'll monitor those as we go. 
But do we have any questions now about market considerations? Doesn't look like there's any right now. Okay, great. Um, and then I think there was a poll, right? Um, or you think the second one poll? That's all right. Let's do uh, the next portion of this, which is going to be state <laughs> clearance. So this gets to the point of, okay, you got your name, you like it, comfortable with it, sounds great. And now you say, okay, let's go see if we can actually create a business entity out of it. Now, some of you may not even want, if you're a solo um, uh, entrepreneur, right? Why would you, maybe you don't need to do an LLC or a C Corp or any variation thereof. You can just be a sole proprietor. So you may not even need to do that. But what you should still do is that if you're kind of DBA, doing business as, right? You should probably take a look at the state in which you, you're working, which in this case is California. I mean, you may be in different states. And um, I put the website up over here. And, and the point is, take a quick look. Um, it's a pretty easy search. And um, if there's a lot of names, now this is not a, obviously legal opinion, but you know, you, if you're nervous about it, go consult an attorney. That's the best advice I would have. If there's a lot of names that sound very, very similar, that might be okay for you, right? Um, because if there's a lot of confusion about the names, then maybe that's all right. That goes into trademark later on. But the main major point here is that if there's nothing that's, um, the Secretary of State is generally pretty lenient. So if you're, if you're somewhat different, it's usually okay. It may still give the guy who owns the other, you know, who, who's registered with the state, you know, some leeway to come back and say to you, hey, you know, you're too closely related, okay? But generally, if it's different enough, it'll be okay. And that's what I was going to say to you. So at least do that, okay? Even if you're not an LLC or a C Corp or in Delaware, the same thing, right? Um, at least give it a look, all right? So, so, so you don't have too many major surprises because it's a low bar. And we did, uh, Ray launched the second poll. There it is. And, uh, Thank and you. Yeah, if you have a chance, everyone, uh, if you can answer that question, do you think that your name is important when you're doing business on Amazon and on eBay? So if you can let us know what you think. Yes, no, and if you're unsure. Yeah, I'd be very interested in seeing what that is. That's a, oh, I'm not gonna say anything more on it. I'll see what happens when the results come in. So we have about 12 people out of uh, the 20 who have responded. So if everybody else, okay, a few more responses in there. Great, we're getting more responses in there. And I'll go ahead and close the poll here. Thank you. I uh, thank you all for uh, voting on this. And there's the results. Do you think it, okay. So this was a really trick question. So I assume most of you guys uh, have bought things from Amazon and from eBay, right? And what's, what's very interesting when you're a, a solo retailer and you're just putting product out there and you're selling through another portal, you will find that your name is not that important. It's not important at all because people are not going to look for you on the Amazon portal by name. Not generally, they might, but generally they look at for a specific product with a specific price point. And so one of the considerations is depending upon, and I, I, this, is, this goes back to the marketing one, so we're a little delayed, but the point for the market considerations is that if you are thinking about using another portal, think about how that affects your naming structure. So then the product name may become far more important than the company name, or maybe not at all because you're based on pricing. So yes, I, I did give you a little bit of a trick question there, but um, generally I would say to you, if you're gonna be going through eBay, Amazon, or any such portal, um, uh, Etsy, um, these things, you, you're trying to build a market around a product at that point and not so much your company name. 
just just a heads up there, okay? So another thing to, to start considering into your market considerations, all right? All right, now I'm gonna, so the reason I, I hooked in from the state search first is because if there is something that's somewhat close to what your name is, you may really want to do a trademark search um, at that point. Now, you can do it yourself. I gave you the website here. And um, I will hopefully, this works, that you guys can see the website from the trademark. Okay, can you all see this, um, uh, my web, the, the website here for the USPTO? Yes, I can see. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. So basically, um, what I'm going to do is you, you go here, and uh, again, this is just for your own review and satisfaction. You want to get into details to, to make sure you're cleared, go to a professional, please, okay? So you go to trademarks, here's test, but this is pretty straightforward enough to at least get a feel for what's going on. Once you're in here, you can see there's this little statement, and what it says is that, um, that it allows you to search for registered trademarks, right? And because what you're doing, the trademark is for likelihood of confusion. And that's a higher bar than the state. So basically, if you got names that are similar, like, you know, McDonald's chased everybody away from using anything that was McDonald's that was uh, in, in the retail food space, right? So, and-, and um, Anything that started with Mick, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And they won most of those, by the way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do something that, um, uh, as Paul is here, so I'm going to do something here that I'd like, I, I hope you guys are okay with. And what I'm going to do is show you, or what I'm going to do is do, I'm going to do cloud and club. You notice I didn't put and, I didn't, I left a space because it, those could be two different words. And you notice that it already does the and for you and leave this all combined words. This is just a really simple query, right? And the reason I picked this was because there's not a lot of them. <laughs> um, in some cases, if I just did, for instance, you see there's only a few of them in there. And you can go look at these. And what you're really looking about is, um, is there anything that really is close and in the same space as you. So if you just like click on this, you'll see that these guys are in food and drink. So again, I'm not giving you a legal opinion that may or may not be okay, but at least it gives you a sense of where you stand with your name, okay? And then of course you can always go to an attorney and, and, and they'll, they may or may not read you the riot act. But if I just look for cloud, and this is what I really want to show you. There are 9,945 records, okay? You're just not gonna go through all of those. And that's why, you know, th this is one of those things, yet where if I look for the exact combination of uh, the cloud club, right? It's gonna work its way and I think it's gonna come back with a bunch of things because what's happened here is it's taken, oh, I know what I did. It did, um, I, got, I got 5 billion records, sorry, um, my bad. What I did there my, was my mistake, um, was I, I didn't do the and. When I did that search again, it didn't do the and. You see this and? Uh, it doesn't matter. I can just do cloud club. Okay. And then, so, so that's just a sense. I just wanted to show you what you can do. All right. And if you get really confused about it, you will have to go see a professional, but it's just to give you a sense of whether you should or should not um, think about changing your name before you do anything else. Okay. All right. And then, Okay, hopefully this went back. You did not see, I said, professionals will always do a better job. <laughs> and then it's the website address. Um, this is the fourth leg of the chair. Um, 
the only thing I would say to you is when you're looking for website address is if you can't get the the you know the name you really wanted as a as a dot com um, think about whether it's really that important right so if somebody remembers some portion of your name uh, again if I just look up cloud club there's a better chance that even if it's not a dot com I might find it right so that gets back to the first part which is if your marketing is good then the the first leg is good the fourth leg will be will will work just as well the one caveat i would say to you is when you are looking for that website name try to be expedient about it because there are bad actors out there and basically when you start looking and searching for names um through the various organ you know the the the, the domain hosting sites that have them you don't know who's paying attention or watching or you know what what people are looking at and there are tools out there for people to do that so if you have a sense of what you want um, and it's there just buy it yeah you know, it's not that expensive just even for a year right you don't have to host it you can just purchase it um, and that's why you should think ahead of what do you want to do you know is it dot com is not available are you okay with the dot org or similar or you just come up with a different name what I found is we actually had, I don't know if you guys noticed, we had a tcxr.io. And what ended up happening is I wanted to switch. I did switch actually uh, hosting sites. And what I found is not all hosting sites can handle all domains. That was a bit of a shock for me actually. So um, um, I was happy to go to uh, the commonsxr.com, but be careful if you do think, you know, you're gonna step ahead and do the .io and or any other uh, esoteric dots right and then lastly just remember that whatever your web address is is what your email address is going to look like i know we don't use email as much as we used to but it's still something right so um just work that out and make sure or you can do uh you can do all kinds of fancy stuff today and and do forward and redirectors and things like that and so if you want a, uh, like we, I have Ray at the commonsxr.com, but I also have a forwarder for the Ray at tcxr.io at the moment. So you can play all kinds of games like that. Okay. And so that's why I'm saying the website, eh, you know, it's important. You should have one. I'm not as concerned about it. And there you go. So I stuck to my schedule about 30 minutes. And um, I wanted to leave the rest for questions and uh, any answers I can offer up. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, and, and Paula, that I hope I didn't offend you. <laughs> so, so not offended. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for uh, giving that <laughs> workshop for all that information. And thanks, Paula, for being the guinea pig there. And um, so, uh, yeah, a lot of great information there. I know we, I've, I've personally had a lot of uh, comments and questions from students who are at that critical point of, of choosing a name. And um, this is your chance. This is your chance to ask an expert uh, and, 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 you know, bring, bring those questions. Let, let Ray know if there's anything that you can, um, anything that he can help with or that we can help you. Um, we're here for that. We're here for that. So any questions at all from the audience? Chat is fine or you can just uh, reach right out. Speak right up, I mean. I actually have a question. Yeah, my name is Vedant Nahar. Um, so my question is, I'm not, sure, uh, I'm not sure if you covered this, but does your name always have to, I guess, mean what you're doing? Like, suppose I, uh, suppose I have an app that's like a delegation app for like nurses and stuff. Does our does our app have to like have something related? Does our name actually have to have something related to like delegation or something? Does it have to be like that, or can it just be like any kind of a name? So, you know, I think the best answer to that would be you should do a marketing survey. I mean, uh, p companies do this all the time about names that seem to register with the. Um, profession that you're looking to entice right so the problem is if you get too cute with a name and do some kind of play on nurse or delegation or something like that a deli you know or something it, it could actually work against you 
And so that's what I'm saying to you. Maybe the name um, is, is important in terms of uh, impact, imprint on your brain, remembering, but the tagline may be the thing and the logo that helps bring everything together in that. So I, I kind of gave that a little short shrift in this, but think about those as, as like a circle, you know, of, of the name, the tagline, and, and the logo, and I'm not saying you need a tagline, but if you have it, it's good that all three of them kind of um, reference each other in some manner, right? Okay. And, and, and then that help, that's helpful because think about a business card, right? When you have a business card, all three of those things will be on it. Yeah, okay, thank you. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Apple, what does Apple have to do with yeah. a computer? Right. Other questions? Uh, other questions from the from the audience? I don't know if everybody's just shy today because I've gotten so many questions recently about this. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, you, you know, the problem for me is that I I hope <laughs> I kept this at a minimal enough level to be understandable because it's it's easy for me to overwhelm everybody. No, I, I think I think it was nice. It's nice having that information and a lot of people. Um, so I, there actually was a question and and um, a lot of people were wondering uh, before if they could come back to this. And I had a question just now. Where do I find this information afterwards? Well, we are recording this. Um, we are recording this uh, workshop and you can access the um, the slides. You can access the workshop by going onto our YouTube channel. Um, and as of <clears throat> tomorrow around the same time tomorrow, but within 24 hours, the, the videos are always up. So you can access the video again and you can, uh, you know, refer back to these. And um, another thing I'm going to say is I did get a lot of feedback from the last, uh, from the last workshops and, and Ray, I went ahead and sent those uh, feedback again to you. And this time around, uh, I also want to make sure that everybody has the chance to, uh, to give some feedback. So if there are other things that you would like to, uh, to see c covered or any questions that you have after the fact, you can put those here and I'm going to go ahead and put that link again in the chat. So if you can fill that out, um, that would be, we'd really appreciate that. And I put that link in there. Yeah. So anytime, uh, anytime you want to do that there, that, that would be just amazing. So uh, go ahead, Ray. I'm sorry I cut you off. No, no, no problem. Um, I can answer these questions. I, I put uh, the USPTO website in there and, and you will see them all again. Secretary of State is pretty straightforward. And then we do have some questions. Uh, um, uh, let's start with a question from Melissa about how you feel about um, intentional misspelling, uh, kids' school with a K, for example. What do you think about things like that? And, and what are issues that you see that come with those? So that's what I, that's one of the things I put up under cute, you know, under the, mm -hmm. the, the cute mm -hmm. heading. Um, but in some instances, mm -hmm. that might be okay. So if you're doing intentional misspelling and it's kids school like you're doing there and then you have a tagline that that somehow represents um we do better at education i'm just making this up <laughs> but um that would i would say that would have a really big imprint right, right. and right. so yeah it would drive me nuts but on the other hand there's commercials out there that i guarantee you would love to erase from your brain that you can't get rid of, right? Mm -hmm. They're so stupid, and yet they're they're imprinted on your brain. So they've done their job, and so um, again, it's I would not do that in a what I call the serious profession like nursing, hospitals, um, lawyering, things like that, because they are people who are looking for people that they can trust relationships and things like that right so if you would do something like that i think that would actually be a deterrent agreed agreed so just know your audience agreed now sure. um we have a question about uh trademarking the tagline paula wanted to know if if that's something that they should do if they should trademark their tagline uh it's you know you can try um it's cheap enough to do it on your own mm -hmm. um, to, to put it in. And of course, the problem is, is that you may, if you get a rejection, you, you may end up having to see an attorney or you're just gonna have to figure out if you really wanna spend the money for it. The challenges are that taglines can be very generic. You know, like apples are, you know, apples are green, you know, as your tagline or something like that, you know, 
you could put that in, but I don't know that you'd ever get that right here because let's say your company name is Johnny Appleseed, you know, apples are good for you. That's your tagline. So um, you, you may get it, you may not. Um, it's a bit generic, so I suspect maybe not, but you can always try. And there may, may, be, may, may be other um, instances where there's more specificity. With and you get time once you get your rejection. So the point is, is once you get your rejection, then maybe you can make a decision and then go to an attorney and say, look, I will say to this to you, though, if you go down that path and you decide and you get a rejection, do not sit on it, please. As an attorney, I will tell you that at least make up your mind within a day or two and either junk it, get rid of it, ignore that, all right, or whatever it is, you know, that you don't want to spend the money to even, you know, pursue it or get a hold of an attorney. So he has the, he or she has the time to actually fix, you know, the issues. Okay. So are there, uh, are there any other questions? I hope I didn't miss any in the chat there. Uh, if you do have any questions, you can put them in the chat or you can speak up. And no, I did want to There's say, three more. Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so I was going to say also, uh, I also put two things in the chat. One is the survey link where you can, after the fact, uh, let us know your feedback. And if you have any questions, then you're welcome to put them in there as well. I also put in the link to our YouTube channel and um, you can access this video and the, the slides um, in about within 24 hours of the, um, of the workshop. And I'll say this as well, if you could actually subscribe to our YouTube channel, I would really appreciate it because if you see our YouTube channel there, how we have uh, in the chat a very long URL. Um, now I can fix that at Bitly, but uh, to actually get a dedicated URL through YouTube, you need to have at least 100 followers and surprise or subscribers. Surprisingly, we don't have that, even though we have something like 1,800 subscribers on some of our other social media channels. So um, if we can get that over 100, then I can get rid of that terrible URL, and I would appreciate that. It would help with our name and our branding. So, yeah. So, I have a I have a a, a quiz for you guys. Hmm free coffee of your choice at, let's say just a Starbucks, a generic Starbucks post COVID, or even I can meet you and I'll buy it for you. What is this picture about? The picture behind you? Mm-hmm. What is that picture? I'll give you a hint. It's in San Diego Bay mm -hmm. and there's a large mammal swimming in it. Seaport Village? No. It's there's not a, a whale, is it? What's that? Is it a whale? It is a whale. Do, who said that? So do, do you yeah, know what this me, is about? It's me, Shelly Lofi. Shelly, do you know what this is about? Or does anybody? Because you're on the right path. Somebody tell me either the name of that whale or what this is all about. Was this the one that was in the bay for a while? I'm sorry, you broke out. Bay for a while? Several days? Yeah, Shelly, you're kind of cutting out. Can you say that again? Sorry. Um, was it one that stayed in the harbor for several days and didn't leave and they had trouble that luring them out? That is correct. You win the coffee. <laughs> now, of your choice, whatever you, you want. Could give it to, you could give it to somebody else. My husband's a fisherman, so that's why I know those stories. Yeah. Your so, husband's a fisherman? <laughs> we had taken our boat out and we were just wandering around and suddenly, uh, I think when my wife shouted out, there's a, the whale's out here. <laughs> And we were, I was like, what the hell is a whale doing in here? Because it gets pretty shallow. This is by all the way in. And so it cut all the engines out and we were just coasting. And, and, and that was a little baby whale that came up. Baby mm -hmm. whale was still about 10 foot long. So, yeah. Now, I've never seen a whale in the bay. All the years, all the years in there. Well, never. that's it. Yeah, the wayward whale. <laughs> all right. So, Shelly, you're, you're up unless you want to donate it to somebody else. So, your choice. So I'll donate it to someone else. All right, so you, I, somebody get a hold of Shelly fast because right. um, that's worth at least six or seven bucks to somebody. Right, right. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, somebody was asking about mentorship, and I think that might be a question uh, directly for me, uh, Melissa. I'll connect with you if you'd like uh, offline, unless that's a question for Ray. If you wanted to clarify, both. Okay, both. So I yeah. think um, she was looking for a mentor. Now, obviously, through the through the Rec Innovation Lab, we do have mentorship, and when you do. Uh, if you do sign up for the uh, for the program, we make sure that all of our students are connected with mentors and advisors, as well as, as student to student interns, and get all sorts of support that way. Um, in terms of uh, mentorship with with Ray, I'll leave that to him. Do you have any questions or 
Come yeah, to me. I mean, I, I'm always available for you guys, uh, especially if you're in a rec. So if you have questions for me, just give me a holler. We don't have to be an official mentor, but uh, uh, I mentor at UCSD. Actually, I wonder if I asked one of my uh, fellow cohort members to join. Um, I don't mm -hmm. know if he was able to join or not uh, from SCORE. So I'm a mentor at SCORE now and um, also mentored a variety of other places. But uh, yeah, so I, you know, it's all good. You guys need any help, just give me a holler. Mm -hmm. And, and it, the, the one thing I'll say to you is that you, you do have to understand that because I'm an attorney, I have to, sometimes I'll say to you, I can't tell you that because I'm an attorney and I can't, we don't have a client attorney um, relationship, right? So, uh, and then you, you notice I kind of dance around the whole trademark thing here because I don't want to be in a situation where I'm giving you guys legal advice. Right. Okay. And then uh, just so you know, Ray, the, uh, your score, I, I believe he, he left. He was here earlier. Oh, uh, good. Your contact from score. So, um, yeah. And, and if you did want to reach out to me again, I think it was uh, Melissa who asked that question. Uh, please reach out to me. I'd be happy, happy to help. And um, yeah. Oh, to always it. use the one thing I'll tell you guys, there, there's a few of you on right now. Use mentors. Use them. Um, use as many as you can get your hands on that makes sense for you and that you, you can, you know, you have good chemistry with because that's really important because you get different viewpoints. And, it, and, and the whole thing is you may get a viewpoint you don't want to hear and then you may decide, well, okay, we don't want to do that, but you heard it. And that's the really important thing. All right. And you made a conscious decision not to go that path. And that's actually as important as, as getting an opinion that you do want to hear and that you do want to pivot to or change to okay that's all i'll say as a mentor no it's great advice it's wonderful i I, I I have thick skin it's all good <laughs> as mentors and as entrepreneurs i think we have to have thick skin especially in entrepreneurship you will hear no a thousand ten thousand times in your life and we develop that thick skin so that's right so and this is actually if you think about it what i did just now is more of a mentorship thing for all of you in one rather than individually for each one of you Absolutely. And we appreciate that. We appreciate that. Thank you so much for all of the insight. Thank you for, and for Rohan. Doing that. Rohan. See, this is why, and, and I, I want to shout out for Rohan because logos, I keep coming back to this. Logos are critical. They really are for your company. And you want to have something about your logo that makes sense with your, with your, the title of your company or your tag or both or all three, right? Mm -hmm because it is that imprint. And, and that's why I keep saying, so Rohan, I think is gonna do a great job for us. And, and um, if you get that capability, that's great. So um, that's why I'm so excited with his work because this is something that can, can be very, very costly to get a good logo out in the marketplace. Absolutely. So I am dead that's, serious. I know that's one of the beautiful things that through the rec, through the rec you get a, a logo design um, through a professional, uh, Rohan is, um, doing the logos for I think about eight teams and then we have uh, some other designers. Yeah, doing I know right. That's a lot And then we have uh, other designers who are, who are doing the rest of the logos, but um, yeah, he does beautiful work and so and, you, and I agree with the Dre what he was saying earlier logos are so important because they visually represent the brand and uh, That's one of the first things that people look at and it's it's got to be memorable. It's got to it's got to captivate um, captivate uh, all the attention. It's really important to have a good brand identity. I agree with you. 100%. And that's what brought me into uh, this this passion of, of creating visuals and things like that. Yeah, so. they're all tied, all tied together. Your, your name, your logo. Uh, There's all three people I'm going to tell you you have to build a relationship with as a company founder. Okay? Your, your accountant at some point, your lawyer, and the, your graphic artist because those guys got to get into your head to figure out what the hell you want <laughs> right right that's a you know i i'm still not a big fan of these these kind of fiverr and um you know all of these other uh you know, gig economy sites for, for for logo design i feel like you know it's great for a quick easy we're bootstrapping fix um but when we're thinking about you know, really building a company and developing that brand identity over the long term, it's something that requires a little bit, a lot more um, knowledge of what you are, who you are, what's going behind it. And if you just, you know, for 20 bucks, get some 
cheesy logo on uh, on one of those no, sites. It's, it's funny you mentioned that, Professor. There was one fiber ad that I saw recently, uh -huh. and they were talking about like not hiring designers and, and just getting uh, some basic work done from fiber, which I think is very useful for, for, for some short projects, but I think for yeah, long term, right. they really missed that point. And I lost all my respect for them, the way they, they, they put it in their ad. Mm -hmm. So I agree with you. Uh, yeah, I agree 100%. That, that, that long term identity, that's something you need that relationship uh, and you need to spend some time on. And I, I appreciate all the time you spent with it's the team to, to, to build the beautiful logos for them. So and well, we're I feel the same way about the design. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to cut it oh, no. off. I, it's just that when I look at it and I try to help people even with flyers, I don't look at it from my point of view. I try to get in the head of what they're trying to say. And I go and look at the LinkedIn site because I want it to reflect the person who's doing the speaking because mm -hmm. I think that's impor an important mm -hmm. fact and the point of a designer. And you're right, a lot of these companies who don't even kind of get to know and just check off of a sheet and not put some personalization in it, it loses the translation of what the company means. Absolutely. And so we are so lucky. Also, Shelly is another one of the designers on our team at the REC who's building logos for the teams, oh, who's wow. designing flyers, designing other identity graphics for, for the for the companies in the rec so yeah we're so lucky to have you guys we're so lucky the only problem is i do it a little bit the old method but i'll get into the new way quick <laughs> now we're now you do a great you do a great job you do a great job but but the the lesson for everybody here who's a founder mm -hmm. is the fact that the the most undervalued thing we have in our society right now is that relationship and and how that works and um, it's really hard to put uh, any kind of number of how much that's worth, right? Yeah. Um, it's, really, it's really the most difficult thing to put a value on. But I would say to you, for instance, even in something that is as esoteric as an incorporation document, what I would say to you is when you get to the point where you can actually spend money for your incorporation, and maybe and, uh, my feeling is always that's way down the road, right? So do everything else before, but that's entirely up to you guys to decide when you want to do it. But when you do do it, you can just go to some really good sites and pull down a form that's incorporation, let's say for Delaware and go use them, yeah. all good. But the problem is, is it's the small print and it's the relationship of the attorney who knows you and knows your company and knows what, you, what the founders want and so all kinds of little pieces in there in terms of the options, in terms of um, what happens when somebody dies, what happens when somebody gets divorced, what happens, and these are real life things, you know, what happens if somebody leaves, uh, you know, what kind of investment, what kind of, you know, over what time period do, do you do it and how, how do you treat each person coming into it, you know, in terms of shares. And- So important. It, it, I can't say enough. And, and so if you start, look, I mean, that's just from a stupid little document, right? Versus now you're talking about branding your, your whole entire company in a marketing scheme that's worldwide on the web <laughs> in front of billions of people, mm -hmm. right? And so if I said it to you that way and I said, okay, now you're just going to put your logo and mark out there and, and that's it. I mean, billions of people are going to look at that and say, uh, <laughs> right? So there you go. So, you know, that's the thing to think about. So uh, somebody who can help you reflect what the values and, and the virtues of your company into the marketplace are critical. I can't emphasize that enough. Thank you. Thank you. So, and actually that's, uh, we're, we're at time there. So yep. I think it's a wonderful place to, to end off. Is there any other uh, kind of closing comment you'd like to, uh, you'd like to leave us with? If not, I will thank everyone. Nope, that was it. All right, well then thank you all for being here and we will see you again very soon. And, and uh, speaking of, of lawyer relations, tomorrow we do have uh, another workshop with our legal team here at the REC. So I encourage you all to go to that. Thank you again, Ray, so much for everything. We're so lucky to have you and thank you all for being here and we will see you again at the next workshop. Have a good one.